Good evening. That was an awesome day. We had such a candid, direct set of conversations. I feel like we got a 360 view into this, into this topic. We heard from politicians, we heard from multilateral agencies, from policy setting bodies, but also from the private sector, from large corporates, from startups. That made for an awesome conversation. Over the next few minutes, I'll just try to remind us of some of the themes that came up through the day. I think Ravi got us off to a very direct start in the morning. He, he reminded us of the big challenges ahead, the 55% shortage in, uh, in emission reductions, the 35% shortage in investments uh, heading into, into net zero. The, 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 the minister from Egypt talked about pushing 100 million people into, into, into poverty. I think that set a very powerful stage for the day. I think SM Thurman talked about the tipping points, the tipping points which are hard to model. And yet we did try to model this. We did try to put some numbers around the investments needed. I know we had lots of numbers through the day, so I thought it would be useful to just ground us on, on a few numbers, on five numbers, so we keep the scale uh, in, in our mind as we walk out today. So the big number, the big number, 9.2 trillion, that's the total system cost, the total annual system cost by 2050. 9.2 trillion, that's a big number. Out of that, about 70%, that 6.5 trillion, is gonna be the low emission part of the cost, of the spending, of the investment that we need every year, 6.5 trillion dollars. The rest of the money is gonna be high emission, we may not like it, but there will be some spend on hydrocarbons. Aviation will still need hydrocarbons, some sorts of plastics will still need hydrocarbons. But six and a half trillion out of that is gonna be low emission spent. For comparison, that number today is only, about a bit, uh, is only about a trillion. So that's the number that'll see a steep rise. Now out of that, Asia Pacific is going to account for 2.2, 2.4 trillion out of that six and a half. 2.4 trillion spends in Asia Pacific. 900 billion of that, we think, is going to have to come from blended finance. The rest may sustain itself, but 900 billion has to come from blended finance. And we will need about $300 billion of catalytic spend, philanthropic spend, to trigger the 900 billion. That's the scale we are looking at. Now, we, we heard different numbers depending on people, whether they were including total system, whether they were focused on energy, power, or also including all sectors, chemicals, agri, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many ways to model this, OPEX, CAPEX, but these are the numbers. Keep, keep some of these numbers in mind. This is the scale that we are looking at. Now, as we progress through the day, uh, particularly as we got into the panels post-lunch, I think the focus shifted to implementation. How do you practically make things happen? I think in general there was consensus. There is enough capital in the world. We are not suffering from a shortage of dollars per se. The question is how do you mobilize private sector finance? We talked about different sorts of risks, specific types of risks to manage. I think Lord Stern was very, was very eloquent about that. And then we got into different types of instruments that are needed for different sorts of uses. We, 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 we got into different types of templates, playbooks needed. We, we just heard from Goldman Sachs about some of their templates. We heard from the ADB about their transition mechanism for Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam. We, we, we heard about the microscope and the telescope. We heard about excitement for NBS and carbon credits, and yet worries, lingering worries about, about transparency, about would things really happen? You know, what's the, uh, uh, you know, would things be just? Uh, uh, as, we, as we go down this route. The one thing that really struck me as we were talking through the day is that many of us will have new roles to play. The way we think about our roles, the way we think about our priorities will have to change. I think uh, SM Thurman put it very eloquently. Would financial regulators act as tools for public policy? I mean, that would be breaking completely new ground. Would the roles of central banks, MDBs evolve? Would we allow them to evolve? 
So we will have to step out of our own comfort zone as we think about, as we think about our roles. Maybe as you walk out of the door today, maybe I'll just remind us of one sentence that came up some, sometime in the, in, in the middle of the day. No human endeavor is going to be more important. No human endeavor is going to be more important. And it is going to be up to us in this room to get this started. On that note, thank you very much.